Hello and welcome back to the fourth installation of the tutorial series of how to play Paragon. Today we're going to be looking at the basics of supporting, what you need to know while playing support, as well as things you should be trying to predict throughout the game. The first thing you should be aware of as a support while your carrier is farming is that you should be trying to keep the enemy or enemies in your lane as far away from the farm as possible, denying them any XP or any card XP. Granted, they're probably going to get some of it, but if you can try and get them away from even a small amount of it, you're going to reap the benefits in the long run. As you can see at the minute, Greystone and Murdoch are very, very far away from their farm, and they're probably not even getting the XP. Well, Greystone definitely isn't, and I can just chase Murdoch away from it because he doesn't want to come close to me because he thinks I have my hook. The next thing you should be aware of is that you should always have at least one ward up at a time. This is the most popular way to gank, there's a little glitch at the minute um, where you, ca you can't do it here, so I'm just going to show you you can't do it there, you have to be on around here. And you can put a uh, ward in the trees, uh, and no melee hero can actually get rid of that, they'd have to get a ranger or one of the casters to come get it. You can hide them inside these kind of trees, um, I'm sure that'll be patched out eventually because that's kind of weird that you can do that. And Granted, you can see them if you ward and they'll pop up there, but it just seems a bit strange. There's some places you can ward. You're going to want to get this warded eventually when the uh, Prime Guardian comes online. You could even try and help out your mid laner if you've got some spare, if your uh, carry's got some wards down and put them kind of here so it guards the entrance to the fog. You can also put them there. Generally speaking though, you're going to want to keep yourself warded up to both the side bit where you can get up through the gold buff and you can also ward around their side here to the left to make sure that they don't come even just from the front, at least you know they're going to gank at that point. You generally just want to keep it nice and warded so you and your carry can just farm up safely with no kind of impedance, as well as putting some pressure on their offlaner. And if you're wondering where to ward if you're on Greystone side like he is now, to the left here through the fog wall, you just make sure that's warded and no one will come behind you. And on top of that, you can also try and get round and ward up where their gold buff is so you can see if someone's going to try jump down on you. The next thing I'm going to mention if you've not played MOBAs that much before or you've not played support that much, it sounds strange but it is your job to die for the carry. If there's a possibility where the carry could live but you die, you should always be the one to die because that carry can then go on to farm or go back and then farm or whatever. They're the one that needs to be strong. You not so much. You provide CC or healing or whatever the, the other supports can offer. But really, you should be dying for your carry. It would just make their lives easier because they don't die. And the end game, they'll probably be stronger than the enemy carry because you've been a better support to yours. Moving on now to the second to last thing I'd like to talk about. And that is that you should always be peeling for your carry in team fights. It's not something that you will do passively. It's something you actually actively have to think about if, it, if you've not played many MOBAs or any games particularly like these. You have to think about, my carry is in that position, these characters could do this. Who's better? Who's the, who's the priority target, really? Who do I need to keep away from my carry? Because if a certain character, such as Chimera or Greystone, late game, specifically get into your carry and nobody really does anything to stop them or try to burst them down to get them off, your carry is going to die, you'll lose a lot of your DPS, and then you'll probably lose the fight and be sat there wondering, well... We were all alive at the beginning, what went wrong? And if there's any carry mains currently watching, they'll be nodding their head going, yes, I never get any peel. An active example of this would be me and this Twin Blast versus a Gideon. The Gideon has a slow as well as his ultimate, which is kind of drags you into the middle. I have a right click, which has a silence, or I have an ultimate, which will root him in place and stop him from ulting. Depending on the situation, whether it's a team fight or a singular Gideon, would depend what I was going to do. If it was just the singular Gideon, I would right click. However, if I could also catch people inside the ultimate, then I would use the ultimate because that's the obvious choice. As you can see, I just tried to do that. However, I did fat finger it, but you can see the intention was there. And we still got one, so it's not that much of an issue. And the second to last thing that I'm going to talk about is your decks. You should be considering what you're going to be doing with that hero and how you benefit your team as well as the addition of the deck. The support isn't just the support and the abilities, it's also the combination of cards which may offer really helpful bonuses such as Circlet of Health, which is a nice little aura which gives your friendlies some nice little boost in healing. 
There are also some one point alternatives to health pots, which for example, there's one where if you drink it, your friendlies get mana and another one where you drink it, you get mana, but then it gives your friendlies nearby health. It's a bit weird, but it's quite cool and unique. Although I could talk about those support cards for quite a while because there's a lot of them. There's a lot of different support cards which are really nice and useful. However, as long as you're building health, mana, a little bit of damage with the mainly support cards that I've just been talking about, you'll probably be fine. I'm sure you'll be looking up some builds on agora.gg and various other websites. And finally, don't be scared to make opportunities. Just because you're the support does not mean that you can't force a fight or catch people out, such as this. I went behind them, they didn't even know I was there. As you can see, Feng Mao's coming in. Give him a little bit of a cuddle there. He decides, nope. As soon as Severog's hit me away, I am leaving. Gideon comes in. Feng Mao's now going to back. Gideon comes in. I just wait for his ultimate to run out because it's doing nothing. Hit him. Make sure he don't get away. And there you go. It's basically a four-man kill. Feng Mao's back. Whoever's on the left lane or mid lane gets to push for free. And they're pretty much sitting there waiting to lose a tower or in here now. And that is about it for the basics of supporting. I'm just going to do a quick recap. You should be trying to push away the enemy laners at the beginning of the game to make sure they don't get any XP or card XP. You should be warding at least behind you to make sure nobody comes in for a sneaky gank that you don't see. You should also be dying for your carry because they're the important person. Granted, you do some work, but they're meant to be doing the majority and you should be peeling for them. Make sure that in a team fight, you are making sure the enemy carries and the enemy assassins do not get onto your carry so they can do maximum damage. And think carefully about your deck before starting a game. Make sure you have a support deck in mind and how that is going to benefit your team. And remember, practice makes perfect. The more you play support, the better support you will be. I'm going to be doing a video tomorrow for the Card Crafter, which came out today. Really liking that. I'm enjoying actually getting cards that I want to use rather than the same ones. And then after that, I'll be back to doing normal tutorials on laning and other various parts of the game. Feel free to leave a comment in the section below telling me what you'd like to learn from a tutorial. And if you like this video, give it a like. If you disliked it, give it a dislike. And if you really liked it, give me a subscribe. And I hope to see you here for the next tutorial.